Hey guys, Bobbery18 here, and welcome back to more Mario Kart 8. In the last part, we did the second to last Retro Cup, and in this part, we'll be finishing off all the Retro Cups, non DLC related, um, on, in the game, the ones that came at the game. So that would be the Lightning Cup with, uh, some new courses. Well, <laughs> technically not new. They're new to you, unless you played the game before, and. Why haven't you? This game is awesome, but technically, if they're, we haven't done them on the Let's Play before, that is what I'm trying to get across. Even though this game came out a year and a half ago, it's it's still new to you. Yeah. And anyway, uh, this is the third um, DS DS track that I was thinking of that I really think they improve on because uh, this this track I just remember specifically seeing. Uh, I, I I haven't really played Mario Kart DS myself, like I've said. But I just specifically remember that this track, um, I just specifically remember watching a video of this track on the DS version just because I was curious what it looked like before. And I, I just remember seeing it in Mario Kart 8 after that, and oh my god, it's such a huge improvement, holy crap. Like, everything is so blocky and kind of pixely in the DS version, but in this it's so crisp and clean and oh my god. It's just so much better, I mean... Why you would ever want to go back to Mario Kart DS when there's clearly already a better handheld Mario Kart game, I have no idea. Uh, kind of burn on Mario Kart DS there. Woohoo, 7 is better, but, um... Yeah, I don't I don't know. It's obviously, just a little bit about this course. It is TikTok Clock. It's based off of, you know, a clock. It's based off that level from uh, Mario 64, which makes me wonder why this level wasn't, like, attempted in, Super in Mario Kart 64. Because that came out after Mario 64, obviously. Mario 64 is the launch title. Um, I guess maybe the technology was there or something? But then why didn't they try it in Double Dash? I don't know. Maybe they were trying to separate themselves from 64 in Double Dash? Because I guess the DS is really when they started going all retro and stuff with New Super Mario Bros. And the GameCube was like the experimental time. And I guess the GBA one, well, that couldn't really do anything. It was basically Super Nintendo 2. In, uh, at least in terms of Mario Kart, I mean, I, I know it was power. It was more powerful than the Super Nintendo, but um, the two Mario Kart Super Circuit and Mario Kart or and Super Mario Kart look just looks so similar. I mean, gosh, and uh, yeah, I really like that. It, you can definitely tell you're inside a clock tower and with, with like the windows and stuff. But that big, that begs the question: like, uh, if we're like in a clock tower, it's probably like we're probably shrunk down or something, unless it's just really, really big. But, uh, what, what is it with DS games and, like, having you sh get shrunk down and stuff? Like, the, for one, the mini mushroom was introduced in New Super Mario Bros. The whole concept of Mario Party DS was that you're getting shrunk down and, like, that's what all the mini games are about. Like, you race on a globe, um, just, like, things like that. You, you have to get, uh, run away from a vacuum. That was a fun one. Mini games, obviously, these are. Um, yeah, and I guess this is another theme, like, in Mario Kart DS, apparently we were being shrunk down to go on a clock. I I don't know unless it's a giant clock, like I said. But also, I just have to point out that was really unlucky. I got struck by lightning and then I got hit by a blue shell. Gosh. Yeah. Usually this that's like the kind of nature of the game that you would see in like Mario Kart Wii. But usually I don't have that bad of luck um, against the CPUs in this game, especially compared to Mario Kart Wii, because. I don't know if I've really expressed why I don't really like Mario Kart Wii, but most of it is because the CPUs are just so, so brutal most of the time. Oh my god. Anyway, uh, the next track is Piranha Plant Slide, or if you're in, like, Europe, I think it's called, uh, uh, actually, for Piranha Plant, I think it's called Piranha Plant Pipeway in, in the European version. Again, arbitrarily changing the names for other regions. I have no idea why, but, you know, they did. Um... Basically, we were just racing through a sewer, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's also kind of based on the, uh, sort of based on Super Mario 3D Land, which came out around the time Mario Kart 7 came out, I think. In fact, they might have released on the same day, because I know they based, they both came out, came out in late, uh, 2011, so maybe they released on the same day, I'm not sure, but, um, yeah, that is, it's definitely based on that game, and it, it, it kind of shows, I mean, like, it shows better in the 3DS version. Well, you can mostly tell at the beginning there, because there, there's, there's like those colorful blocks and stuff like that. It just really reminds me of the... Maybe not colorful blocks, but colorful like, uh... Like, uh... Like, on the, the, the tracks on the bottom, like here, like these red... 
green and yellow things. And also at, at the beginning there was like a castle, which again, I don't know, underground levels, brown plants, I don't know, it just really reminds me of that. Also, I almost got nipped by him. Yeah, there's a center path you can take that I think it's a, is actually faster, but I, I don't know, I just, I every, every time I was trying to take it, especially in this recording, I was just, try, I was going to get nipped by the prana plant, but... Oh yeah, I guess I should probably complain about how they didn't really update this track at all, because, you know, 3DS, but... Actually, now that I think about it, I can't really remember this track all that well on 3DS, although I know they did update it some, like, I think they made, like, this top path here, maybe that was there before, I don't know, anyway. Um, I, they made this glider section, so you're going, like, up in gliding, instead of just, like, straight forward, which I guess is kind of cool. But I also kind of like going over that castle area like there in, the, in Mario Kart 7, I don't know, it just felt really cool going over that castle area, but... Now you can't really, because you can't get enough height, because you already have to fly up and get height to actually just go through the regular place, so... Other than that, it's a really unique course, and it's probably one of my favorite courses in Mario Kart 7. Um, in this game, I guess, kind of too, but I don't really count, like, remakes as my favorite courses, although... I did kind of say Showerland was... Well, no, I said that was my favorite remade course. Well, it's not, actually. I was about to say that in the last part, but... And I stopped myself, because then I remember the DLC ones, but... Yeah, I don't know, if you just look, you can even, like, look backwards and just see, like, the path you went on, I don't know. Just really cool, although, um, the Mario Kart Wii track that they remade for 7, uh, I think it's called, like, Koopa, Koopa Falls, or something like that, I don't know, it's, it's basically kind of like this track, except it's more outside. Like, there's a bunch of waterways and stuff, I, I almost like that one a little better, but I think I like this one better, just because, um... Like all the underground sections, I don't know, I think I like the underground sections more. I'm, I'm re being really indecisive here, but, um, I don't know. That's sort of my opinion on this track. I, it's not as bad as, like, Music Park. I think Music Park is definitely the worst culprit in tracks they barely even remade at all. But, uh, that one, I think that one actually does more than, uh, DK Jungle 2, now that I think about it. Or maybe they're about equal, I don't know. Anyway, uh, a Wii one, a Wii track, when's the last Wii track? I can't remember. Any anyway, Grumble Volcano. Which was from Wii, obviously. It's based on, I guess, the lava-themed worlds from Mario games. Yeah, right at the beginning there was this, there was Morden construction. Not Morden, obviously, being one of the Koopalings. Um, and again, with the silly advertising in this game, I love it. Um, I guess Bowser sort of like set up a castle in like the volcano because there's definitely a ca sort of a castle aesthetic still. Um, but it is inside a volcano. Well, this part is inside a volcano. And then, it, like, half of it is inside a volcano, half of it is, like, running away from an erupting volcano. Like, look in the background there, that volcano just erupted. Like, and we're definitely gonna be seeing that. Look at, you can even see the fireballs coming, like, in the distance. Look at, look at, it, you can see it coming from far away, like, that's so cool. The, they definitely improved on it from the Wii version, I mean, obviously, because we... Well, we, like, in just terms of how it looked and how it played, I guess it was fine. It's just mostly the CPUs that were kind of bad, but... Um, I'm glad... I I actually didn't really even re remember this course from Wii, because, like I said, I haven't played that much of Wii, just because I didn't really like it that much. But, uh, I went back and played it after after I played it in this version, and it's... Wow, did I just dodge that blue shell from getting hit by a banana? Wow. Okay. Pro tip, if you're going to get hit by a blue shell, get hit by a banana instead, because... It's actually less of, like, a hit. You don't get, like, flipped over or anything. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I actually went to go replay this in Wii, like, after I played it in 7, and after I had, like, my fill of... Or, after I played it in 8, and after I had my fill of, like, 8 and stuff, like, a few months after the game released. And, uh, I, I really liked it. I mean, obviously I like this version better because they sort of improved on it, but I, I can definitely see, like, why they remade it, um, after having played the original, because... It definitely deserves a remake, especially because, uh, look at all the, like, the bloom. I think that's bloom, like, on the lava. If it's not bloom, it's, like, something in that nature. Look at, is there coins on the lava? I'm not going to turn around and check just because, well, actually, I'm kind of far ahead, but not really. I thought I saw coins on the actual lava there. I'm not sure, but, hmm. Well, I'll have to go back and actually see that in editing, because I could have sworn I saw something on the lava there, and it looked like coins. It might have just been, like, fireballs or potaboos or something, because uh, they sort of blend into the lava, but I could have sworn I saw... Okay, no, it wasn't coins. It was, uh... See, like, there's, like, little bubbles coming out of the lava, like... Because that happens in lava, I guess. Okay. That would have been weird if, like, coins spawned on the lava. I mean, 
I guess it wouldn't really happen because the coins aren't randomly spawning in this game. But, uh, they're, they're like in set paths and they just respawn. But hey, that would be funny if coins actually, like, spawned over the lava. Or if someone fell in the lava, but they but they got hit by, like, a shell or a banana first. So they lost coins, and then those fell on the lava, then they fell in the lava. I don't know. Am I making much sense right now? I have no idea, but, uh, I guess, I guess playing a Mario Kart Wii trick sort of makes me gibberish. I don't know. <laughs> Surprisingly, all the CPUs were not that hard in that trick. Although, I've gotten, like, blue shell, like, three or four times in this cup so far so I don't know anyway the last track of, of the retro courses and this would normally be like the last track of the game if you're just playing the normal like the normal non DLC stuff is Mario Kart 64's Rainbow Road and I know everyone was like oh my god Mario Kart 64 Rainbow Road <laughs> when they announced that it was going to be like the retro Rainbow Road they're bringing back but actually since then they brought back another Rainbow Road the SNES's one just weird because it's also in 7 but I'll talk about that when we actually get to that but Mario Kart 7's Rainbow Road I really um they, ma they actually made it only one lap and it's like one of those sectioned off courses this was the other sectioned off course that I was talking about um but unlike Mount Wario, it's actually like a lap still. Like you could do more than one lap if you wanted to. But it's just only sectioned off, so it is only one lap. Because if you ever played the original, this course can be kind of long. So I, I kind of don't blame them for only making it one lap. But at the same time, it's kind of really short now that I think about it. But um, I do like that most of it is gated off. And I, I know that I'll, someone would probably say because I sort of complained that the Mario that uh, Mario Kart 8's Rainbow Road sort of looked like digital and stuff and I guess this one kind of does too but the original looked less digital and I don't know I just this one looks definitely more rainbowy doesn't it like the Rainbow Road in for uh, Mario Kart uh, 8 just looks sort of washed out this one isn't washed out at all it just looks so irregular I, I don't know I like this one a lot better and I love the remix that they did for the Mario Kart uh, 64's Rainbow Road theme like I said, um, the remix they did for Mario Kart 7's Rainbow Road is actually better in my opinion because they filled like the the uh, gaps where there was wasn't any melody with like other melody. So I don't know. I like that one a little better, but this is definitely an amazing remix, and I definitely appreciate it. What the? I thought there was another red shell coming. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, there's also like that that train in the background that throws uh, coins at you, and wow, I really thought someone was gonna catch up to me. Oh my god, so many red shell. What the heck? Jeez, stop with the items. This is not Mario Kart Wii. Oh my god. A really grand, uh, really grand finish. But yeah, that's the entire course. I, I kind of wouldn't actually mind if it was still three laps. Uh, like I said, it is kind of short, but in fact, I really didn't get to talk all that I wanted to about it. I kind of wish it was three laps, but basically, I, I really do like it. I like it better than this, ga this game's, like, native Rainbow Road. But, uh, yeah, I... It's actually probably my favorite Rainbow Road in this game because I don't really like the SNES one either, but... Anyway, that's the, the Lightning Cup. Ends with another Rainbow Road, just like the end of the uh, regular cups. So I guess that's a book ending almost. Don't, yes, don't, don't, don't show me getting hit by items, especially when it was kind of uh, stupid. Everyone sucks but me? Exactly. Anyway, uh, the Lightning Cup in this game, it's... Uh, Coming out of a cloud, I, I almost like the one in Mario Kart 7 better because it was like a glass, like piece of lightning. It was like a piece of lightning with glass in it. And yeah, I'm gonna skip the credits again just because we don't need to see them. And I guess they do appear after the Lightning Cup too. But uh, yeah, that is going to be it for this part of Mario Kart 7. In the next part, we have four more cups to go. All of them the DLC cups, and all of them will be done in the next four parts. Not in the next part. That would just be an insanely long part. But anyway. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you then.